Jesus is my surname, you can say. I dated God for many years, but I got married with him five years before in the water, in Jesus' name. You know, we, we come to the church, we date God many years, coming, going, going, coming. But the marriage happens in the water, in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you attending the church or are you the church? Amen. I was the attender of the church for many, many years, but I became the church five years before in the water when I got baptized by immersion, by immersing myself in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Carl mentioned yesterday in his preaching that we give the teaching about the baptism in Jesus' name and the Holy Ghost baptism and a confusion started. I believe, I, can, I, I don't want to say this word, but I can challenge you. You cannot show me one baptism of the Father, Son and Holy Ghost in the Bible, no. but I can show you the four baptisms happened in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. So my marriage ceremony happened with the Lord, with God Almighty in the one, five years yeah. before yeah. and then I became the church. So my surname, yes, my name is Sharon John, but you can say that my complete name is Sharon John Jesus because he has baptized me in his name and I am called by the name of the Lord. Amen. Would you clap your hands for the Lord one time? Hallelujah. We will sing one song before we will sit down and hear the next preaching. I will not take so take you so long. I know um, I'm also hungry, I believe many of you as well. But I am more hungry for the presence of the Lord which is already here in this place. We cannot seek Him more unless we desire more for Him. Amen. So we have the desire to be in the house. It's a kind of house of the Lord, we can say. So we will sing a song, Amazing Grace. Like my brother preached, the unforgiveness, will, if it will not depart out, out of our life, we cannot be saved. So the, the thing is, not that I was baptized in Jesus' name and I became the hero or I became the champion. No, sir, God is my hero. Amen. He's the king of this house. He's the king of our lives. There is nothing good in us, nothing good in me, nothing good in you. But God is so good to us. I am less than enough, but my Jesus is more than enough. So we will sing a song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Well, 
be forever my chins my chins are gone I can set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flower is my I see what it means it means that God blesses us every new day the mercies of God flows every new day yes. he yes. don't give us the leftovers amen for today there is fresh anointing in this place amen. there is a fresh deliverance in this house amen. amen the fresh healing you can receive in the name of the Lord you don't need to depend what you received yesterday there is a fresh breakthrough here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in this house today He's not going to give us the leftovers. He's going to give us something fresh. I claim the fresh anointing of the Lord in this place. In the name of the Lord, receive the fresh anointing in this place. I'm not talking about the inspiration. I am not talking about something sensational. I am talking about the anointing of the living God who is worthy to be praised. His fresh anointing comes upon you. Say that, Lord, I receive in Jesus' name. Everybody say. Let's open the Bibles. We shall go to Mark chapter number 4. Verse number, I will start reading from the verse number 35. As I promised you in the beginning, I will not take you so long. And we shall just um, wind it up within a few minutes. Mark chapter number 4, verse, verse number 35. It says like this. And the same day, when the even, in the, in the New English means evening, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Pass over means we shall go to the other side of the sea. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, mean they took Jesus with him, even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. Verse number 37, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. The water began to come inside the ship. Verse number 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and see. He, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Yes. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they fear exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand in the presence of the Lord, God, I believe that you are here in this place. I feel not only the presence of the Lord in this house, but I even feel the presence of the angels in this place, oh God. I thank you for everything. Anoint my lips. Anoint the words come out of my mouth. God, let me, help me to deliver this message the way I have received it from you. God bless these people. Change them. Change them completely. We ask for the complete and absolute dominion over this place. 
dominion over the demons of this city God and over the prince of this air God. Yes, we God. like the deliverance because you like the deliverance of God and we claim the deliverance to fall upon every heart and mind captured by the sin. God in the name of Jesus I ask and I pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to move yes, in this place. In the name of Jesus let your fire to fall and lead us into the place where you want us to go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. <laughs> the title of my small message is The End Time Call and the Pressures of Life. As you know that the theme of all this crusade is the end time call. So we shall follow the same topic including we shall um, mix up with another topic the end time call and the pressures of the life every person i see outside on the street i find every person in a great pressure when i look into the eyes of the people when i look at the faces of the people i find them that they are pressurized yeah. by some kind of pressure in their life everybody if you will notice if you will go out walk on the streets. There are big smiles over the faces of the people, but inside, deep in their hearts, there is a pressure. Yeah. Every person, every single soul, they are fe facing a storm of different pressures. I believe I'm talking to the human beings and you all have a kind of pressure in your life. Everybody, every human being is facing a storm of different kind of pressures in the life. We feel, you know, as a believer even, we feel different kind of pressures and we feel that we are sitting in a kind of pressure cooker. Amen. Because of the pressures of the life increasing it day by day, on and on, day by day, it's increasing day by day, the pressure over our minds and over our lives. Whether it's an economic pressure, mean the financial pressure, like you before we were working few hours and getting big money in Greece. Amen. Now, now we are working many, many hours, very hard work, but we are getting little money. The pressure, any kind of pressure, we, if we are facing, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. The family pressure. One person is earning the money, five people are there to eat the food. Pressure. The pressure is increasing yeah. over the human minds and over the human race. The global pressure throughout the world. America is the king of the world and they are trying to push the other countries, you know, sometimes like in Pakistan, I mean, they are throwing the money and they are watching the shows against the terrorism. Amen. So sometimes the pressure is increasing in a way all over the world, all over the countries, over the people, over the minds. The pressure is intimidating the human race day by day, day by day and day by day. There is a pressure of the future. Sometimes we think we, we should have to be in another place or in another situation or in another level of the life but we have wasted many many years of our life and we are not there where we supposed to be amen so the pressure is increasing day by day world world health organization according to their survey they say that after every 40 seconds somewhere in the world one person is committing suicide because of the pressures of the life any kind of pressure they are committing the suicide after every 40 seconds because of the pressure rising upon the hearts and the lives and the minds of the people one million people are dying every year or committing suicide every year just because of the pressures wow. of the life yeah. we think I mean, where to go where to go where this shall be end where the end will come how we shall be released from all these kind of pressures of the life. Maybe you are facing a kind of pressure of the battle. You are fighting a kind of battle inside of you and the pressure is increasing over you. Amen. Somebody is getting me what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about the pressures of the life in this end time call. Yeah. Why in this end times we are facing lot of pressures, lot of things in, in our life. The minds are seized. <laughs> arrested and imprisoned and detained by the by the pressures of the life and it seems like where it will end how long it will take us yeah. or how far it will go if we open the television two days before uh, i was watching the tv in my at my employer's house and uh, when we were watching the news 
five policemen were killed in, in the city of Dallas, Texas, in, in sister, um, sister's state. She lives in Texas. So five policemen were killed. Everything is worse and worse and worse and worse. Every new day when we see the news and the things, it's creating a kind of pressure over the lives, even not only the common person, but even on the lives of a believer. Day by day, the suffocation, the hands are getting tighter around our neck and we are feeling a kind of pressure over us. The stress, the pain, distress, suffering, agony, it's increasing day by day, day by day, day by day. But I have a good news for you. Yeah. Even in the midst of all these pressures, there is one person who is always standing beside you. And his name is Jesus. He can rebuke all your storms. And he can deliver you out of all the pressures of the life. But because this master, this Jesus can do anything for you. But the question comes in the mind. It's a question that why this is all happening? Why day by day the things are getting worse and worse and worse. Because the reason is because the time of the rapture is closer. Because the rapture is close and the time is getting closer day by day. That's why the pressure is increasing. The spirit world and the world of the flesh are getting more closer. They are creating more resistance between each other. This pressure is because of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and He is coming soon. Amen? Amen. He is coming soon. I said again that Jesus is coming soon. You can clap your hands for this Jesus because He is worthy to be praised and honored. The world, the flesh world, it's written that, that wrestle not against the flesh and the blood. Where is our battle? The word says in Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 12. He says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So the spirit world and the world of the flesh, they are standing now side by side. And these both things are creating a kind of resistance between each other just because of the coming of the Lord, the things are getting worse and worse and worse day by day and it's not going to get better. I mean, I'm not scaring you for something, but that is what the Bible says. Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 24 that if you will hear the, the rumors of wars and, and, and the earthquakes and the things, just you can you can see that the coming of the Lord is near. So this pressure is increasing day by day because the Lord is coming soon. So this is the time to make your hearts ready and to make your paths straight because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Is coming soon. The earthquakes, the wars, the terrors. People are not afraid to blast themselves. Yes. Would you believe? I mean, the time is getting closer. That's why the people are not even afraid. The terrorists, I don't know if they get money or what they do, but they commit the suicide and they blast themselves and kill the other people also. Yes. These kind of worse things are happening this time in the world because the rapture time is very, yes. very near. The pressure is increasing. It's day by day, day by day. It's increasing. Yeah. But this is the time. Church has to keep his faith high. Amen. Yeah. You have to believe the Lord. That the Lord is always standing beside you. Even yeah. in the midst of the pressures. Yeah. Even in the midst of the song. The Lord is always beside yeah. you. Let yeah. not your faith to shake. Yeah. Let not your faith to shake. Yeah. Once the disciples faced this kind of situation. Like we have studied in the Bible, we will go back to those scriptures again. The, their faith was kind; of, it was shaken because of the storms were rising around them. The things were happening. They were in the boat. The things were happening, and and they thought that we will die. Amen. It's it's written that they went to Jesus and they said, Master, don't you care that we are going to die? Yes. They said the same things. So the pressure, the suffocation was 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 increasing in in their life that time. That's why they, they, they had to go to Jesus. Amen. So now the question is, if the pressures are increasing in our life, where are we supposed to go? They went to Jesus Christ and they wake him up. Right. Amen. 
if if the pressures are coming upon our life in this end time where we supposed to go we have to go back to Jesus. Jesus amen there is no other way there is no other place that we can go and release all those pressures and get a kind of relief in our life there is only one place the feet of the lord the presence of the lord we can go there and receive Hallelujah. the relief Hallelujah. from him Hallelujah. no one can give but only he it's written that it's written master in amplified version the the, the word is used teacher don't you care that we are about to die they were thinking that now we will die because the the, the winds are very strong the sea is just the, the raging sea will kill us so they were thinking that we are just about to die and it's written that he got up now Jesus stood up I'm reading now from amplified version you may not find in King James so just if you will listen to me it's written he got up and sternly sternly means in in a very strict way you know the, the, the winds can 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 scare me the storms can scare you the yeah. pressures can scare her or him or him but to Jesus there is no pressure amen this man called Jesus have authority over all the winds yeah. and he is the king over the floods amen. amen he has the authority and this authorized man called Jesus Christ the storm cannot do anything to him the pressures can 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 put me down can put me away or you but this Jesus he is the creator of all these seas everything was created by him yeah. nothing can scare him it's written that sternly in a strict way he stood up and when he stood up what he did it's written he rebuked the wind and said to the sea he was talking to the sea amen he can talk because he knows how he created everything the master knows everything he has created by he, him himself amen Barak knows these things well he did not create it he's not the inventor but he knows the things well but what if he had created all these things what more he will learn about yeah. all these things amen yeah. so Jesus was not giving a kind of lame excuses there he was not saying oh the wind is there so let me also let me sleep little more I mean he did not give any kind of excuse it's written that he stood up and he rebuked the sea in a serious way in a strict way and he said and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea he said shh like sometimes you know when it's very noisy we say shh so it's written in the amplified version literally Jesus did that amen in the original text when we go it's it's uh, when it's translated into amplified version I believe he did that and it's written that it was muzzled mean it was stopped it muzzled mean to stop something or someone from expressing their opinions freely the sea can scare me sea can scare the disciples or the pressures can scare you but there is nothing in this world created can can really uh, can really make Jesus care amen he is the master over the winds and the floods so he rebuked the, the the sea and he said be still and the wind died down everything became silent there is nothing can stand before this God amen you are feeling a kind of pressure this God is for you you are feeling a kind of stress this God is for you you are feeling a kind of pain in your life this God is for you you are passing through some agonizing situation this God is for you there is nothing this God cannot do in your life which is impossible for him everything is possible unto this God and he can do anything for you you have to hold on to the promises of God because this God can do anything for you. Amen. One thing I will tell you, very important in this scripture. Jesus said to the disciples, let us go to the other side of the sea. He said already. Now the storm came, the things happened, they thought we are going to die. And they, they, they thought maybe we will not be able to cross the sea anymore. Amen. But finally what happened when the sea became silent they went to the other side of the sea. Now what I want to say is no matter how many storms in your life, no matter how much pressure you are facing today, if Jesus has given you the word it will come to pass. Amen. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Before they face the storm Jesus said already that let us go to the other side of the sea. The word already came out of the mouth of God. Amen. Yes. So they, they did not meditate on that. 
Sometimes God speaks to us and later we feel, feel difficulties. We think that, I think that was the voice of the enemy. Amen. Sometimes we say like this. It happens. It happened to me several times. God gave me a word. I thought later the things little messed up. And I thought maybe it was not from God. That's why the things messed up. But let's see how the things ends up. Amen. Let's see that how the things will end up. He said that let us go to the other side of the sea. The storms came. The things happened. They thought we are going to die. But later what happened? They really reached to the other side of the sea. Because Jesus had already given them the word. That let us go to the other side of the sea. Amen. If God has given you the word. No matter how many things are happening in your life. If God has given you the word, no matter how many pressures you are feeling in your life, you will make it through. Amen. You will go through this situation and you will find your destination because God has given you the word. God has given you the word. Now the last thing I will talk is that what will happen next? You know when there are pressures, we feel that what will happen next? So this is the question comes in the mind. What will happen next? The, the next thing is that Jesus will come soon yeah. and the church has to, got, has to be ready. Yeah. Amen. Because the Jesus will come soon, it's an end time call. So the church supposed to be ready this time. Yeah. But if you are not ready, today is your day. You have the chance. Yeah. One year before I got married and after I got married to my wife, she left her family. She left her old, old, old life. She left her old name and later when she got married to me, she took my name and she became my wife. On her all, in her all official documents, in everything, even in the Facebook, she changed her name and she adopted my surname because she got married to me. Amen. So what my question is, like she did that as my partner, she possessed now everything I possess. Amen. My properties, my things. My possessions, everything belongs to me. She's the equal partner to me in all those things. Now the question again is, do you really want to marry God or just you want to play with God? I mean, we dated for four years. I dated my, my wife four years. And after four years, I got married last year. Amen. Are you only dating God or you want to get married to God? It's a time to get serious, you know. It's a time to get serious. Like my wife got married to me, she took my name. She took my, my things from me. She's my equal partner. The same thing happens when we got married to Jesus Christ in the water. We became the partners, the heads of salvation, the partakers in the kingdom of God. And we, we get the same rights he has in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. It's according to the Bible what I am talking to you. Now the thing is, Sometimes we feel what to do now. How can I? How, can, how should I start? This is the start. Jesus is coming soon yeah. and he is coming to take only his bride. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Only he is coming to take his bride. Are you the bride of Jesus Christ? Have you got married to Jesus Christ? Have you been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the water? If you are not, then I'm sorry. The rapture is not for you. I'm not scaring anybody. I'm not forcing anybody. I'm just trying to help you to understand. Jesus is coming soon. The end time call is. He is coming to take his bride. Amen. But yes. are you the bride? Yes. Where the marriage ceremony happens with the Lord. As I mentioned in the beginning. Five years before I got married to God in the water. My marriage ceremony happened with the Lord in the water five years before when somebody put me in the water and he said that in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins I baptize you that is the time when we get married to God if you are not not yet married to God and if you think that you need a kind of salvation in your life and the pressure is increasing because of the coming of the Lord you have the chance this is your time to, to be with the Lord Hallelujah. Amen. would you please all stand up once I was going to one, one big city, it was a bit far from my place. I had to travel three hours to go to that place. When I, when I already traveled one hour, I saw some sub roads and the signs.
the shortcut going to that place. So I decided to go through that way to reach to that city. When I went to that, that shortcut and that subway, in the end I, 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 I just drove like one hour, but I, I found no place to reach. Amen. You know, there are many roads inviting you to come. There are many doctrines inviting, inviting you to come. There are many false preachers, false doctrines, false prophets are giving you the sermons. Come and receive the physical healing and you are fine. Come and receive this and that and you are fine. No, sir. Don't leave the main road. Amen. This is the secret this time. This is the end time call that don't leave the main road. The blessings, the power, the salvation only belongs to those who stay on the main road. And the main, the name of that main road is Jesus Christ. Amen. He said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now the thing is, what should we do? Again, one more time, I will take you there. There was a, there was a question arose in the time in Acts chapter number 2. When the Holy Ghost fall and they begin to speak in other tongues. And the people gathered outside. They said, what is going on? I mean, it's just morning and they are drunk already. Then Peter, Peter preached a sermon unto them. And it's written, it broke their hearts. And they asked him, what should we do? I believe many of you today are asking the same question. What should we do? And Peter gave them the solution. He said that Peter said unto them, repent. Repent means to change the way of your old thinking and come to the Lord. Like the things God likes and dislike the things God dislikes. Turn around like Brother Carl mentioned yesterday. He said, repent ye and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Because there is no other name given under heaven unto the man. There is no, no, no forgiveness in any other name. Only in the name of Jesus. He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Would you close your eyes for a moment, everybody, as the presence of God falls upon you and the conviction of the Lord comes upon you. If any one of you needs salvation and need repentance, actually we all need repentance. Every person needs repentance in our life. We need it. Every new day we do the mistakes, we do the sins, sometimes the sin of commission, sometimes the sin of commission, even we don't know, but we do the sin. If you have done something wrong, even you did not do and you don't remember, just repent of your sins. Repent of your sins and say to God to wash us with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Tell to the Lord that God, I repent of my sins and yes. wash me yes. with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Now what next? What next? The next is you have to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You have to die in the Lord so you may rise up again with the Lord. The resurrection power of the Holy Ghost is in this house. You can start praying. You can open your lips and start praying unto the Lord. You can, you can, you can do that. You can do that as the power of God falls upon you. Can you hold the hands of, of somebody beside you? Can you just grab the hand of somebody beside you? And if nobody's there, just, just, just pray to the Lord. Lift up your hands. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the sin and we speak the deliverance in the name of Jesus. God, as the conviction fall upon these people, God, let them to repent in the name of the Lord and let them to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ that there is no other God besides Him. He is the only one. God, let your power to fall. Let your power to fall. Let the souls to repent. Let the people to repent. Let them to be changed in the name of the Lord God. This city will never be the same, O oh God. These people will never be the same, God. Great will never be the same, O oh God. Deliver the people from their sinful heart. As the sin captured their hearts, we speak the deliverance of the Lord Jesus Christ to fall upon you in the name of Jesus. Be thou delivered in Jesus' name. Be thou delivered in Jesus' name. Be thou delivered in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Oh, receive the fresh fire which falls upon you. Receive the fresh fire falls upon you.